Yo, it's Death for the Cloud Chaser TV, man. We back up in this thing again, you dig? Hey, man, we got a gangster edition. If you ain't already subscribed, subscribe to the channel, man. Pistol, Pete, Peter Rolock, Sex Money Murder, New York Sex Money Murder Gang, Rule the Streets, man, or the Bronx, the drug game, the same way the zoo. And the Yankees are to the animals in baseball started in 1992 by a teenager. Peter Pistol Pete Roloff. Sex Money Murder went on to rule the streets of Soundview Homes Projects and the Castle Hill Projects. Eventually sprouting satellites in other cities and infiltrating itself with the United Blood Nation. Soundview Projects, man. Home of a few legends. Wesley Snipes. KRS One. Big Pun. As well as Lord Tariq. Now, before we get to how Pistol Pete ended up in the Supermax prison in Florence, Colorado, let's give you a breakdown of his story. Pistol Pete. He was known as a clean cut guy. They say very suave, man. As well as ruthless and deadly. He was from the Soundview section of the Bronx back in the day. Also, blood affiliate, sex, money, murder was his gang. In his teens into his early 20s, Peter cried a reputation as a ruthless killer who made millions in the drug game. In the late 80s and the early 90s. He was known as one of the most feared and the most powerful men in New York during the crack era. Who could get people killed with his words alone. His influence, organization, stretched all the way in the south. From cities to five boroughs reaching out. And touching states all across the eastern seaboard. Pistol Pete was one of Soundview's original gangsters, setting the bar high for those who are in his hood in the Northeast Bronx area. In the city and all down the coast, Pistol Pete was known for buzzing his gun with no consequences, man. When it came to gun smoke, he didn't play. He was all about his business. It was rumored that he had a body count in the double digits. They said that he was quick to pull and quicker to blast. But nowadays, you know, if Pistol Pete was around in New York, they got the gun detection system. And they developed this where it can detect guns through cameras and alert owners through apps. And the technology is growing. And will become more mainstream over the coming years. Now, it's not about salary. It's all about reality. That's why they called him Pistol Pete. He was a gunslinger from the Old West. A modern day Billy the Kid. In many of his murders, Rolak was allegedly involved in and were ordered from his prison cell. Even after being locked up, he still controlled his set, the Sex Money Murder Crew, from his jail cell, streets of Bronx and beyond. Even to this day, Pistol Pete name is revered in the South Bronx, in the walls, in the buildings, still carrying the Sex Money Murder markings from Pete's heyday. Because of all this, Pistol P has gone down as a true certified street legend. Police said Pistol P had been in prison at the Rikers Island Correctional Facility and he had became a member of the Blood Gang. This was all during his eight month bid. And they saying that his induction into Blood was different. It wasn't ordinary. It wasn't like a jumping in. He was so high profile and his name had so much high regard that they wanted him on the team. That the Bloods gave him his own set. 
how he first got on is how he first became a blood was like this, said sources. He was a beast on the Rockers, a monster. The blood on Rockers Island wanted to bring him in, but he was like, the only way I'm going to be blood is if you all give me my own set. And to my knowledge, that was how Sex Money Murder was brought into the blood fold. He became blood in 1996. Say, OG Mac tried to recruit him. And they tried to recruit him, but Pete wasn't a follower. He was a leader. He didn't want to get with them, but he did. And when he did, he turned the whole neighborhood red. OG Mac started the nine trade gangster bloods in the first East Coast blood set in 1993 on Rikers Island in 1993 with fellow prisoners. So even then in 1996, when Pistol Pete was locked up on Rikers Island, he had a lot going on. Sources say that he was still running the game from the island. In 1996, while David Gonzalez was still dealing with Hershey McNeil, Gonzalez spoke by the phone with Pistol Pete. Gonzalez owed McNeil money for some fronted coke, but Pistol Pete wanted the money Gonzalez owed him, and he wanted more. During the telephone conversation, Pistol Pete let Gonzalez know that the source of the cocaine Gonzalez was moving was in fact Rolock's father. Allegedly, his friend George Wallace, who Pete called his uncle. Pistol Pete explained on that phone call, my uncle gave Hershey some cocaine to sell for me so I could pay for my lawyer. Pistol Pete then went on to explain that the kilo and a half of crack that McNeil fronted to Gonzalez actually belonged to him and Pistol Pete wanted his money. The whole North Carolina deal had left sour taste in Pete's mouth. So he decided to shake Gonzalez down. Gonzalez was shook and agreed to pay McNeil the money he owed and to loan Pistol additional money to pay for his lawyer. Pete ended up getting about 20 grand from Gonzalez, but his shakedown would come back to hunt him. Once the eight month mandatory system sentence for the gun was up, Pete's mother bailed him out and Pete walked the streets free for two weeks. So after coming home, for that two weeks, they say Pistol Pete came home on blood shit hard, sources say. He had the whole block in red. All his mans and them were all in red. He was the real serious on that blood stuff. They had the red converses, red everything. Pistol Pete didn't play around. He turned this whole area into blood territory. Money talks. That's the shit was like a wave when it happened. After that, you saw bloods everywhere. That whole joint was like that, all red, the whole area. Once the gang takes over a certain section, you either in or you out. You either you be in or you be out. And that was what Pistol Pete was preaching. You with me or against me? He didn't go for all the fake ass bullshit. Pistol P helped that blood shit spill over into the streets from prison. But unknown to Pistol, that would be his last two weeks on the streets. He's been in since 1995 with only two weeks on the streets. Pete, again, during them two weeks, he ended up going to court two weeks later. And they held him, revoked his bail, told him he ain't going nowhere. Reason being is because of a murder case that went on in uh, North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. And two weeks after the bail, he goes back to court. They tell him that he got a new drug case in North Carolina. He's been in jail ever since. That was in 1996. He was only 20 years old. So, y'all know the story, man. Sex, money, murder. He's been, um, because of the charge 
And because they say that he was doing hits while in prison, they put him in solitary confinement. And he's been in there ever since for years with no um, reach to the outside world. No one can talk to him. No one can speak to him because of, they say, his power. Similar to Larry Hoover, similar to Jeff Ford, and many other guys that we'll be talking to that's located in the Florence, Colorado, Supermax, ADX. I want y'all to get in the comments and let me know what y'all think about this story, man. Did y'all know anything about sex, money, murder when y'all was coming up back in the day? Did you hear some of these stories about Pistol Pete? Stuff with the Cloud Chaser TV, man. Check y'all on the next one.